At four o'clock, we got App State, who's one and one. Trevor East Carolina, who's two and zero. App State favored by one and a half points on ESPNU. Joey Aguilar has gone forty to seventy-seven, thrown for five hundred forty yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions. Anderson Castles had sixteen carries for one hundred eight yards and a touchdown, and Caden Robinson has had eleven catches for one hundred sixty-one yards. Jake Garcia has gone forty-eight to seventy-four, thrown for five hundred ninety-one yards, four touchdowns, seven interceptions. Normally, when you see that stat line. That doesn't lead to a 2 0 start, but it has so far for East Carolina. Rajai Harris has had 32 carries for 155 yards and two touchdowns, and Anthony Smith has had 10 catches for 156 yards and a touchdown. App State is 21 and 12 all time against East Carolina. The last two games have gone to App State in 2021 and 2023. 1959 was the last time East Carolina won at home. So it's, it's been a little bit, right? Um, I think what's really interesting here is how is East Carolina undefeated so far? And it kind of makes sense in week one. They played a nobody. Um, and if you look, know what Old Dominion is, then it kind of makes sense in week two. If you don't know what happened last week, Old Dominion picked off Jake Garcia three times. They didn't turn those into a whole lot of points. And that's been the problem with Old Dominion. If they had a competent offense, which is crazy to think about because Ricky Ronnie... <laughs> was an offensive coordinator at Penn State. So theoretically speaking, offense should be the strength of that football team. But weirdly enough, it's their defense. Their defense has been extremely good. It was the reason why they almost beat South Carolina. It was the reason why they should have won the East Carolina game. It's just if you could have an offense if you're Old Dominion, and that really sucks. Um, App State's coming off a rough loss, right? App State kind of got their butts kicked against Clemson, and I think that one's that one's going to end up making them likely not a playoff contender. And I would have normally you've been like, okay, they're still very much in the conversation in this group of five, but I think this is weirdly enough one of the strongest years I think I've ever seen for a group of five. Normally, there's not a lot of teams that I'm talking about as really really good football teams. Um, for the group of five, there's normally like two or three, but I think there's like eight or nine this year that I think are having really, I think this is the first year where I think whoever wins, uh, there are each conference has at least one team that I think has a legit argument and I think could be a really good football team this year. Um, unfortunately for the App State, that is not them in the Sun Belt this year. To be fair, they're on the lesser side, right? They don't have to worry about Texas State, which looks like the best Sun Belt team to the eye test. Right, and we'll see that if that happened tonight. By the way, I'm recording this Thursday, so they're playing Arizona State right um, in a little bit. So we'll see what happens there. But I think with that game is going to be really interesting. I think this is a, this is going to end up in a loss for East Carolina. As, as surprising as the two and zero start for the Pirates is, I don't think they're going to keep move it to three and zero. Although it'll be a shot if you keep it at three and zero. Suddenly, you're going to be one of the few Group Five teams that I'm still talking about. That's a big win if you're East Carolina. Uh, but I do like App State to go on the road and, and win at East Carolina.